Hello, everyone. Hello. I'm very happy to be here and tell you my story of growing up on a farm in Bryantown, Maryland, which happened to be a little historical town. And it's historical because John Wilkes Booth came through there. And also, I'd like you to know that my name is Mary Louise Booth Webb. I'm going to start my story sort of like what I have in my book. I grew up in Bryantown in 1924. I was delivered by my grandmother, who was a midwife. She also delivered many kids, neighbors or uh, kids that came to, into the farm mainly, and it was during the Depression. She delivered uh, some of the, most of the, the, the one family that came into our, our neighborhood was the German family. So I grew up the German family. But anyway, one of the things I just love and can't believe it, that I am back on this farm where I was born. So I just, I just love that. And I'm back on the farm with my son, grandson, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. So I'm happy about that. I'm happy to be on the farm and be out where I grew up. And I'd like some questions from the audience because I'm not just here to tell you. I want to learn from you, too. And some of you might have some questions that you want answered, so feel free to ask me as I go along. I will probably, and I'm a hop, skip, and jump person, I might move from one subject to the other. When I was about seven years old, I, I lost my mom. Before then, I lived in a one-room school in Fort Washington. Uh, and I can barely remember. I remember some of the things about my mother. And one of the things I remember about my mother is when she was picking black, I mean, uh, strawberries on the farm there in Fort Washington. She got two cents a quart for picking those black uh, strawberries. I would go to the field with my mother. My father would work the, the uh, farm. And also, on Fridays, he would take vegetables to southwest Washington. And it was called a trucking farm. So he'd get in that truck and take those vegetables to southwest Washington. And I can recall going there with him. Uh, one of the things I can recall about living in that one-room school with no, no heat. We had, we had wood heat. No outdoor, I mean, of course, back then, they didn't have any indoor plumbing. So we had to pull the water from the well. And it was a bucket there, and you pull the water from the well. Uh, the other thing I can recall, which uh, I, it wasn't a pleasant thing, but during the time, they were dredging for whatever, sand or gravels, on the Potomac River. And on Mondays, my father would take us, I think probably the four of us then, my sister wasn't born then, take us on the Potomac River to fish. And I had a terrible fare. And you know if you're on a small boat, the boat will be rocky. And I have a terrible fare of the water. But anyway. I haven't quite got over that. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, at the death of my mother, we had to go to my grandmother's house. And my grandmother lived, like I told you, on this 200-acre farm. So I went to grandma's house. And what a joy, because living a one-room school and going to a 10-room house was something very exciting and a lot of land that you could just roam. So we enjoyed doing that. Plus, 
My grandmother taught us many survival skills. My grandmother taught me many things, and that's why I think in today's society, I could survive. I know how to start a fire. I know how to do many things. I know how to can. But anyway, as I say, my grandmother taught me many, many skills. And from, from that, we would go out in the field and pick the, the blackberries. We didn't have to buy very little. Very little did we have to buy. We would pick the blackberries. We had an apple and, a, well, a, I should say a fruit orchard. So we would go there. I mean, we'd go in the, in the pick uh, apples. Uh, just, we just had everything. And it was, it was wonderful to, to have that and to know how to use everything you had. And, of course, there was a lot of hunting. You had to hunt for your food. You could fish, you could hunt, and they hunt. We had rabbits, anything that was out there that was edible, we got it and we ate it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, there were squirrels, rabbits, quails, and I must stop right here and tell you what I saw the other day as I was browsing in the Safeway and was kind of looking for duck eggs. And I was looking for the duck eggs because about a month ago, uh, the guy on the farm came, stand at my door and said, here's some duck eggs for you. And I said, what am I gonna do with duck eggs? Well, that was the wrong thing to say. But anyway, getting back to the quail eggs the other day, I think it was last week, and I was sort of brown looking for duck eggs, and I looked up, and there was these brown, uh, kind of dark brown and light brown eggs, and they were quail eggs. So I learned something new, quail eggs in the safe way. Now, sometimes I lose my train of thought, and somebody have to bring me back. But anyway, <laughs> I was at, I was, uh, the food, the food. I guess I can tell you about killing the hogs. And what a job. Anybody that lived on the farm and killed hogs know that that was a big job. And it was a terrible job, a big, big job, when my grandfather would kill eight hogs. And of course, we had to stay home to help with making the sauces, making the, uh, what is it called, sauce, whatever. Liver, liver, pudding, um, just, just whatever you could make. But anyway, I can remember my grandfather going out, and of course you had a barrel in the ground where you would heat the big pieces of uh, metal. It he heated the water. And then you put that hog in the, in the uh, barrel, and of course, they clean it. And they would, uh, about 11.30, we got the liver. So that was, we looked forward to, we looked forward to that, to have, have that liver for, uh, for dinner. Then we got to uh, making the sausages. We made quite a few because we had the number three bathtub you can imagine with eight hogs, so we had the number three bathtub, and of course you mixing it, and you had to mix and mix and mix. Then somebody would probably, you know, sample it. And uh, but the good part, and then we had to clean the casings to put the put the uh, what's it called. And you can buy casings today. I think I saw them at Nick's. You can buy the casings today. And we made those, uh, clean those. Of course, we kept, we had to soak the casings overnight. But then we had to stuff the casings. And you had that big, big hutch gun, and you, <laughs> you put those on there. And then you had to hang them in the smokehouse and let them season out. And of course, we'd done this around Thanksgiving. And when uh, Christmas came, that was Christmas breakfast, the sausages. Uh, and, and it was just, when you think now that you just didn't have to buy anything, didn't have to go to the store, 
Uh, we did, my grandmother did occasionally uh, sell her eggs to the, to the Bryan Town store, and from that we would pick up uh, maybe sugar or baking powder. Uh, from the hugs, we had chickens, and uh, believe it or not, I didn't have a doll when I was growing up. So, guess what? When the chicken, you know, when the, when the mother hen lays her eggs and decides, well, I've laid about 20 so eggs, now I'm going to try to hatch my <laughs> chickens out. So anyway, and but well, she would get on the nest, and I would go out there and take that hen up and just hold her, hold her in my arms because she was nice and warm. So I'd do that. And uh, I do a lot of talking to school kids. And uh, maybe, uh, I would say, from five to eight. And they are so fascinated and ask so many interesting questions you wouldn't believe. And so anyway, some of the things that I would tell them, uh, I would say, uh, do you not know, I would say, who woke you up this morning? My mom. I said, well, the rooster woke me up this morning. <laughs> and did you know what a little girl said? She came up to me afterwards, and she said, Mrs. Webb, I said, yes. She said, my grandmother said she wished they had a rooster to wake her up <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> um, we did have cats and all kinds of uh, the dogs and all that, and ho we had horses and cows, and I had a cow of my own, and I had to milk that cow before I went to school. I'd also, my cow had a bell on the neck, and you know that's because the cow, the cow went in the forest, you had to find her in the evening. So the way you'd find her, if the bell was on the cow's neck and she was grazing, that bell would ring. You know which way to go to bring the cow in. Met the cow, and then we would uh, we'd put the milk, strain the milk. We had a strainer because there would be trash from the, the cow because the cow was out in the forest. Um, and uh, sometimes people say, Strain milk? What are you talking about? I say, yeah, you have to strain the milk. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have many of these things. I must bring this up. We do have a lot of these things that I use down at the African American Heritage House, which is two miles down the road. <coughs> uh, so we strain the milk, but we put it in the cellar. Kids today, cellar, what's that? I said, we put it in the cellar. And of course, the next couple of days you had the cream, and then you would have to make your butter. And of course, we did have a butter churner, but then you could make it in a, a jar. And I made a lot of butter. And one time when I was making the butter, um, a young guy said, what I did, I used to shake it myself. So then I said, well, let me uh, save myself and let so I started there, and sh you shake it for a little while, this other person. And after a while, <laughs> I looked at this guy, and I said, you got it. And he said, what have I got? I said, you got butter. <laughs> and of course, uh, then you needed to wash the butter. I have been contradicted, say, what are you talking about washing butter? You can't wash butter. No, you can't wash butter in hot water, but you can wash butter in cold water, ice water. You wash the butter, and of course, after you wash the butter, you uh, uh, and make sure. And after washing the butter, before you wash, the, you got that buttermilk. Making butter is so fascinating. You start off with just cream, and then you look. You got butter and the buttermilk. And remember, you can make those good old buttermilk biscuits. Um, so anyway, from the butter. I could go to, let's see, what else? What else should I go to? Who wants to know something about the farm? I'm ready now for some questions. Yes, sir. 
when did they when did they pay Brian Town Road? Was, was that a dirt road back back there in the thirties? Brian Town Road. Back in the thirties and the twenties. Yes. Yeah. Gravel. I don't remember Brian Town Road, but it had to be, because every road road I read on was gravel. Road on was gravel. From, when, from, when did you finally get electricity down there? I don't remember. But I can tell you one thing, when we did get it, my grandmother got it in the old house. <laughs> she wouldn't use it because she knew. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just like you uh, will say, well, just like we do today, uh, some people will say, well, I'm going to park my car or oh, I'm going this way because I want to save a few pennies. Oh, I tell you what we did have back in 19, uh, 19, 1949, 1950. We had an ice man in Waldorf in 1950. We had an ice house and we had a uh, ice man. And the ice man would, uh, would come. And when I, years ago, when I was on the farm with my grandmother, the ice man bought the ice to my grandmother's and a horse and wagon. Horse and wagon. And he would probably say, uh, and we would only get the ice uh, on weekends because we knew we were going to have company. We knew we were going to have somebody from the city that was coming down to get a good country meal. But anyway, and the ice man said, what, what size do you want? And you got the ice to the size, because of the size of the money you had in your pocket. <laughs> if you wanted a 50 cents piece, you got it. Plus, you had to wrap it in newspaper and the burlap bag and put it in the cellar. Because that way, if it didn't, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't last, last long. Um, Another question, then I can talk more. <laughs> I, have a, I have a question, Ms. Webb. So before computers and TV and stuff, what did you do for entertainment as a family? Oh, honey, that was nothing. <laughs> the men uh, mostly played cards and I guess, I guess told jokes. But anyway, we would have so much fun because uh, one of my uh, aunts, had 10 children, and they would come to my house on Sunday, and did we have fun. We, we would, uh, and everything that we played with, we made. We went out in the forest and got to pull down the grapevine. That was our jumping rope. Uh, we made our own balls. Uh, what a, we, we, we used the back of stick, and that was our horses. We rode on that. We took a, um, a tire, and we rolled it. That was our car. We had a lot of fun. And yes. Uh, your horses, you had horses too? Yes, yes. Tell us about some of the horses where uh, they have names or you gave them names or did they work or did you? Tell us something about horses. We had uh, farm horses, the big farm horses, and they were huge because they, we used them to plow the, the farm. Uh -huh. So we had big horses. But did, believe it or not, I wasn't a horse girl, and I, again, fear. Lost the fear of horses because I got on the horse once and was going down a hill. And of course, when the horse was going down the hill, his feet was sort of sli sliding on the gravels. And I said, oh my God, if I fall off. So I got a fear of horses. But I loved them, but I just had that fear of horses. Yeah, we used the horses to plow the land. And now I tell people, we have all kinds of horses. We have show horses, and we have work horses. And I'm referring to, to the people in the order. Some people work and some people don't. <laughs> Any more questions? You have one? Did you grow up on a farm? Did you grow up on? Yeah. Um, well, I grew up near a farm. Yeah, okay. And well, our that's... neighbors had a big strawberry field. And we used to pick strawberries. Pick, pick strawberries, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that all this, um, 
going up 210, that all that farmland was truck farm, strawberries and everything on the strawberries, watermelon, cantaloupes, because that's all the things that we took into uh, uh, D.C. Uh, as I was saying, hunting, when people hunt, believe it or not, when uh, on the farm, uh, my father would, uh, the hook, and you, you could, we had traps, and number one, you put them up on the pole, and you uh, catch the uh, hook, and you caught the hook because the hawk was eating up your dinner. He's probably eating up your, the rabbit. He probably, eat, he really ate the rabbit, and if he catch the chicken, he'd eat the chicken. So they got the hawk, but right here in the play, the, my father would catch the hawk, cut the bill off, and it would sell it over here for a quarter. Now, you know, back in those days, a quarter was a lot of money. My father would also catch turtles right down on 234, and uh, bring them up into La Plata and sell them. And t t a turtle are uh, a delicacy. You wouldn't think it like turtles and eels, and people say, ah, oh, I wouldn't eat an eel, I wouldn't eat turtle, and all of, of uh, that. Soup. Yes, sir? Turtle soup. Turtle soup, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and my father could really make a turtle soup. And believe it or not, I knew how to kill, kill the turtle. Because you know, snapping turtle, and you'd get a, a piece of wire, and you'd do that, and he'd snap it, and you'd pull his neck out and chop his neck off with the axe. And plus, how about cutting the chicken's neck off? <laughs> how about wringing the chicken's neck off? And then the chicken would get up and run for a little while. <laughs> uh, there's so much to learn on a farm and any place else you, if you want to learn. But uh, think of the chicken's feathers that we dried out and made the pillows. Yeah. Uh, you also dried your fruit on the, uh, the, on the roof or on a piece of board, you dried your fruit out. Uh, I can tell you that I do everything that my grandmother taught me to do, I do it today. Just yesterday, a couple of days ago, I made I uh, got graham sauces, and I made my sausage cake. I grow my own herbs, so I had my sage. I dried my sage out, and I made my sauces. I look, many times I'll look on a recipe bottle, and oh, let me see what's in here. And if I have it, I can make it. Make my own uh, salad dressing. Yes, Miss Me. Keep on talking. I have a question. <laughs> but anyway, and my grandmother had 14 children, two sets of twins. Uh, both she had a boy and a girl each time, but the, both of the boys passed. Uh, and then after that, we came along. My I think my the youngest, uh, my grandmother's youngest was. Fifteen, here came five of us, five of us. And then while we were growing up, my grandmother uh, took other kids that came in. And I must tell you about, now people say, I guess, hobo. But we still have hobos today because they're trying to get from one place to the other. And most of the people that were traveling, men, I never saw women, but when men were traveling, they had a back on their back, and they would travel, and people would tell them, go to that store or go to that church. So that's where they would go. But many a times when they came into Bryantown, they would send them to my grandma's, which was about a mile and a fourth. And they'd walk to my grandmother's house, and they would stay there probably for about a week and get their stomach filled up, and then they would walk on to the next place. And people are doing that today, too, because I found that out when I was working with the Red Cross. And some guy came, and uh, he was walking. But sometimes people, I say, <laughs> people sometimes are smarter than you think they are. OK, so this man was walking. Well, he knew that if he walked from Bell Alton and came to La Plata, and if there was a Red Cross office, he could go in there and say, I'm homeless. Red Cross would put him up for a night. 
give him food, and also put gas in his tank. If, well, if he was riding, they put gas in, and he'd go to another place. Uh, any more questions? Yes. Um, you, you, I met you in 1994, because of the garden that you were living in Waldorf, right? Yep. And uh, cause she told me to hook up with her, and I have been hooking ever since, just 24 years. But I want you to tell them another side of you, because of what your grandmother did. I mean, you, you lost your mother, you're seven, and your grandmother said, Charles, your father Charles, bring the children on down to me. As a result, when you lived in Waldorf on Old Washington Road, what did you do for other people? You know what I'm getting at. Yeah, Tell them that side. Because yeah, yeah. there's a lot of sides to Mr. Webb that a lot of people don't know. Yes, that's right. Tell them that side. Well, I wrote this one book. I had no idea I was going to write it. But at the age of, I don't know. Uh, anyway, my sister sent me a clipping. And this lady was 70 years old. I couldn't believe it. I said, oh my God. She wrote a book at 70. But anyway, I, <laughs> I don't know if I cut myself off or not because I wasn't supposed to put my hand in my pocket. But anyway, um, <laughs> I began, I began writing my first book in 1995. And I think it was 1913 when I, I mean 2013, when I published 2013. Uh huh. But uh, anyway, uh, getting to yes, Ms. Smith, what she said, my, uh, that my second book will be It's All About Me. And it's all about me because I've always enjoyed helping people. So I started, and all of us know about lifestyle, right? Yeah. Uh, I started with lifestyle. Lifestyle called me and said, uh, Ms. Webb, come down. We want to talk to you. And when I got there, she says, Ms. Webb, we have a family, uh, two little, two children, a mother with a baby, and no place to go. And uh, can you sit there now and see if you can find a place for her? So what I did, I sat there, and I thought, and then she told me to go and see because the lady was in the hotel and she said she can't stay there on the night, that night. So what I did, I uh, went to see her. And when I, when I opened the door, she fell in my arms, she cried. Right then and there, I said to myself, I have an empty room at home. So anyway, I took the lady and kept her for five months in my house. The other person I took was from Nigeria. She had came here on a visa. And the lady she came to help told her no. Something she did, she said no. So I kept her, I kept her a good while. But anyway, I've kept a lot of people, but the last person I kept was when I sold my house in Waldorf. She was with us. She lived in a car right here in Charles County. So when I call her, where are you? She say, I'm down at the Hughesville. No, I'm at the library. I'm trying to find something at the women's shelter. I said, don't sleep in that car tonight. Come to my house. And all of this, I didn't tell my husband. I took it on my own. <laughs> and anyway, she came and she, she stayed. And I still write her today, but she stayed at my house a long time. That's the story Ms. Smith wanted y'all, part of it. OK. <laughs> Veronica, yes, you have a question? <laughs> You've known me a good while. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Well, I always want to learn about the hugs, how to kill the hugs. Uh -huh. And I have uncles that's still doing it. So I took my time out and went over there and see them about two years ago. Uh -huh. And I have pictures. Good. You know, you know me, this way I got pictures. Got all the pictures. And, and, and um, just to see all that. And you explain that, you know. So oh, yeah. Uh -huh. It was nice to know about that, you know. Uh -huh. And I don't know they killed any this year or not because I lost track of them, but, you know. Uh -huh. Well, you know you can down it. What, what I done, um, I guess about three years ago, 
my uh, cousin that lived in Bryantown, he would go down to Amish people and they will kill the hog for you. Yes. You can, you can uh, order, order hog, they will kill it for you, they will uh, dress it for you and they will call you if you want to uh, pick it up and then you can do the rest. My cousin O'Brien's doing that. Uh -huh. you know, Picking up, uh huh. Uh huh. Did you have a. When you were on that farm, that big farm, what were your cash crops? What was your big. Oh, tobacco. tobacco. Okay. And we'd take it to the uh, tobacco barn in Hughesville. Right. Mm -hmm. And the tobacco barn in Hughesville was built in 1900. And by the way, I'm there now with the vendor shop in case yes. any of you'd like to come to see me, visit me. Well, that was yeah, tobacco. And I plant tobacco. They still plant tobacco just to show the people uh, at Dr. Mudd's. So I plant once in a while. I'll get a plant, a plant from some plants from the Friendly Farm, not the Friendly Farm, uh, Serenity Farm on the Benedict Road. He'll give me some because I want the kids to see uh, the tobacco, see how pretty the tobacco blossom is. So I do that sometimes. But uh, right now, I am very, I need to go do my shopping at the nursery because I'm very interested in growing all types of uh, vegetables. Um, one of the things I grew, looked in, because if you look in the uh, magazine or go to the nursery, you see different plants. So I grew round cucumbers. They were about the size of an orange, and that's what they look like in the field, and the, the cucumber. But now I'm, I'm searching for uh, pine berries, pine berries. And it's a, it's a cross between a um, pineapple and strawberry. So hopefully I can uh, find that. And whatever else I see that's new. I have uh, about 20 some herbs and I want some new ones. And I grow this, uh, what is stevia, which is the sugar natural sugar, so I grow that too. And where can we get that? You can get plants of that at, at Lowe's. You can get the, the stevia plant, and that's supposed to come back every year. So you're not preparing them and putting them up for sale or anything? No, no, but you're welcome to come to Don't my worry. garden whenever you like. Ms. <laughs> 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 Red, tell them more about your garden. She, she asked you if, if you were going to sell them, if you work in her garden. <laughs> <laughs> she might get that. Okay. <laughs> 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 but tell about your garden on Brian Town Road and then also your venture in uh, the, at the Hillsville uh, uh, barn when you got your vendor's license. There's so much about you in the garden. Sometimes I don't know if I'm coming or going, but I'm still going. And sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes I, I was just telling a person, I say, sometimes you got to forget what you've done in the past and leave it there. Forget it and leave it there. Uh, I had someone to ask me, I, I had a truck, and so I, I recently got a car, and so are you going to, I thought he was going to get a truck. I said, hold it right there. Some things you leave behind don't go behind. No, don't go searching for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what else did you say? Oh, well, tell them about when you got your vendor's license in Hughesville Barn, and, yeah. and then your garden out on Bryantown. Oh, yeah, you said garden on Bryantown. Right. I, I, I love my garden, and uh, that's my passion. Uh, now I go, I have now a few watercress. Uh, onions are still growing. You can plant onions in winter. They won't freeze. I have about six different kinds of onions. And I started with uh, Mr. Diggs, who started the uh, Afro-American Museum. And he had gotten a couple bugs, and they're called uh, uh, Egyptian onions. And once you plant them, you don't have to worry about them because they make their own little bugs on top. And they fall on the ground, they just keep, keep moving. What's it called again? Egyptian or walking onions. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then uh, the garlic, you know, the garlic just comes up every year. And, on that. and so I, uh, garlic, all kinds of uh, mints, lemongrass, you name it. Uh, I have quite a few. But uh, I'm saying about the, now I'm talking about the, when I went to the bargain barn. Mm -hmm. That's the best thing ever happened to me. 
<laughs> I've been there six years, and I met some wonderful people. Uh, and the other day, I could have cried. Saturday, uh, I met this man, very nice man, and we. And sometimes I, I have a rocking chair, so if you're coming, you're shopping, you want to sit down, you can sit down. But anyway, uh, this this man and his wife have been coming to see me. And Saturday, he bought his daughter. And uh, so he said, this is my daughter. And believe it or not, he had bought his daughter there to play the guitar for me. And I was, oh, because you know, I no, the Western, what it, Western music, what it, country music, because I grew up on country music. My grandmother used to play the country music with the car battery sitting outside the door, <laughs> outside. <laughs> Anybody know about that? <laughs> Beg your pardon? Where'd you go to school? Where was the school at? Um, I went to Bryantown Color School. And that's why I am here today, I guess. And that's why I, I love people. Because one thing they taught me at the Bryan Town School is a golden rule. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Uh huh. And I was at Matula School last week, and I told the kids, I said, do unto others as you want them to do unto you do unto you. And I told him, I say, anybody in here that don't that don't want to be treated like you want them to, I said, raise your hand. I don't want to see a soul's hand go up. Because <laughs> you all should be wanting people to treat you like you want. And uh, Mr. Where was the school? Where, where oh, that's the right. School? I'm sorry about that. I walked a, a Bryantown school. Bryantown still, the, the school's not, but we have a memorial there. Bryantown Church, uh, it, I tell you where it is, when you get to Bryantown, keep on cross and the church is on the left. Uh, St. Mary's Church Church. Yeah. yeah. Uh, would you stand up please, Mr. Yeah. Davis? Uh, David. 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 My name's John. David. Last name's David. Okay, Davies. Yeah. Oh. That's close enough. That's close enough. That's close enough. Now, now let me tell you about this. <laughs> That's my neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> and when he come in the door, he said, oh, you know, I said, what's left of me? <laughs> but anyway, I went to his house in the summer, wasn't it? Yes, it was. By the way, I still had the pillars in my car. You wouldn't believe it. But anyway, I had a yard sale. I'm going out. And I said, oh, my God, I don't have much time, but I'm going across here to the yard sale. And I did, and that was so wonderful because they had been there a good while. And I'd never known them. Uh -huh. And so we had the best time. And she practically, practically gave me what I bought. Because <laughs> I still had some things. I still had some things. And I thanked him so much when I saw him coming in the door today. And uh, I guess I'm going to, I'm a time person. Yes, she is. How much? I want to, I just want to turn around and tell you something. You all know Mr. Hey, no, I don't know who know Mr. Clark. Who knew Mr. Clark? That's what I should say. I know his son. Huh? I know his son. Oh, good. Let me tell you about this. As my son said, this man, when this building was um, open, when this building was open, the day this was, I'm quite sure that same picture was sitting on the stage. Well, my son was going to sing, and uh, I was there. We were in the cafeteria, and my son didn't know that he was coming to this clock center to de dedicate to Mr. Mr. Clock. And when he got on the stage and looked around, he said he could just cry. Because when he was a little boy, I guess maybe, I'm saying a little boy, but maybe eight years when children play basketball and baseball, and he went and he said he wanted to play so bad. And at that time, you know, things weren't integrated. So he said, 
So, the, the, so Mr. Clark say, you want to play ball? He said, yeah. I say, go home and get $5 from your mom and come back here. And my son says, and Mr. Clark, let me play ball. So that, you know, it said so much for Mr. Clark. And his family happened to be sitting down front, and they said, you said what we wanted to say, but we, we couldn't say. So I wanted, I just had to bring that up about uh, uh, Mr. Clark. Mm -hmm. So, uh, any other question? Uh, about your book, uh, do you have your books here today? Sorry to say, I only have three, but I ordered some and I told them to put them on a rush, but evident I didn't get them. But what you can do is give uh, Miss uh, sign in, and you, uh huh, I'll and then I'll bring them. Put, put your name and your telephone number. Uh, she call you. Let's record. Okay, okay. Now, okay. yeah, uh, can you spare one? And I'll be the first volunteer to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can bring. Um, uh -huh, yeah. But I'd uh, also like to uh, mention. Uh, you've sown a lot of seed, uh -huh. good seed, in people's lives. Thank you, Father. You have sown a lot of seed, seed good seed. You know, when you yes, sow yes. seed uh -huh. and, uh, and people lives. Can you give us, uh, real quick, some tips about your, your, your life as far as longevity or extended life? And uh, you've been standing ever since. I've been here, see, so you, you're in good shape. Yes. Uh, and just give us some tips about whatever comes to your mind. Okay. Would you get in your car with no gas in the morning ride? No. So you need to feed your body, give your body something to go on. I eat well, I rest, and I run the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens when you go up on the farm. Yes, yes. You learn right. about fresh food versus store bought food. That's, That's right. right. That's right. right. Kids. Uh -huh. You know, I grew up on the farm and I can relate to you. I testify to everything you said because I've lived it. Uh -huh. And so just grow up on the farm. Just, just get out there and get in the dirt. And, and, uh, so, so, so that's my passion, because in the summertime, 7 o'clock, I'm down in the garden, and uh, I say, my friends are at the doctor, but I'm here in my garden. And, and, and it's, it, it is a miracle. A garden is a miracle, because if you plant a little watermelon seed, and you can grow a watermelon like that, that's a miracle. Those seeds are miracles, because you sure can. Little, little mustard seed, how about that little mustard seed you can grow? Uh -huh. and, uh, and I garden all year round because uh, I'm, I'm just so anxious to try things. Uh -huh. I like to try things. Now, when you go home, if you have a fascithia bush, break it off and get little some of the bottom off and put it in the water. And next Saturday, you'll have your flowering fascithia. And so I got mine in the window. I know you can do that with the fascithia. Yeah, the branch, just a little branch off here and put that so I have some of them growing. Um, something else I was going to say. Oh, he was asking, asking me. Uh, and uh, I just, uh, I guess, you know, my grandmother, and when I can say people done so much for me when I was growing up, they gave us, uh, just, just people just gave you things. And uh, I got to say this, uh, I, I don't have a fur coat, but I did have a fur coat. It was loaned to me, and I, I just gave it back to the lady. It was loaned to me because Miss Smith's brother gave his mom a fur coat, and he was gracious enough to give it to me. I said to myself, I wrote him a nice letter. I said, thanks so much for letting given me, he gave it to me, but I'm going to give it back to him because I don't know what my son will do with it. So give it back to him and let someone else, <laughs> let someone else enjoy it. 
you know. So anyway, that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm going to uh, do. And I just, yes. You shouldn't have just come to that out. But anyway, my mother had passed away. And my, my brother had, and I'm from Anne Arundel, and my brother had given her that coat. And so when it was time to say what we were going to do with the four of us, because lost, we lost a sister and a mother four years apart, and I asked my brother, would he give it to me? My adopted mother. Because she's the third lady that, the first biological mother in Anne Arundel, and then I had one in Anne Arundel, and Prince George's who died three months after my mother. And so I told Mrs. Wave, she, she's not going. No, I said, you ain't going anyway. Okay. <laughs> English. All right. But uh, I just want to give you a tip because I taught school down here. And Ms. Webb came to my classroom in 1994 in uh, for Black History Month, month of February. And um, she was talking about an herb garden. And I think at the time you grew, what, 20 some herbs at the time? She lived in Wall off on Old Washington Road. And one of my young students who, uh, you know, he had to do something with him. He said, uh, after Ms. Webb got through, he wanted to, he told Ms. Webb he was going to buy a car. And Ms. Webb said, how are you going to buy a car when you don't have a job? And then when she got through, he said, may we come to your house? Because of the God and everything that she said she did. He was impressed by her. And I just want to say when you ask the question, another reason why Ms. Webb still drives, she's still able to do what she does, and besides the good Lord taking care of her, she does so much for everybody else. That's right. She she has never forgotten. I, I remember when 1994 when I she left my classroom and she said, "You think you're busy? Hook up with me." And I said, "Oh, that lady not doing anything. Lord have mercy." I don't. I didn't know what I did when I hooked up with that lady. But uh, but she taught me that. I, I know we had an event down here. Taught me that when you have something, make sure everybody can attend. And don't charge so much that nobody can. And, and we talk on the phone, because I'll call her sometimes in the morning at 7, or 7.15, I called you this morning, uh, uh, when I'm on the road, and, uh, and we talk about how your heart feels good when you do things for other people. And that's why I wanted her to talk about her taking in people at her home. And she, that's just the tip of the iceberg. And I've been fortunate enough to be along with her these 24 years to see all of that. But this is an amazing uh, woman. And I think it comes from the fact that her grandmother, yeah. when her mother died at seven, uh, her grandmother said, Charles, bring those, your five children to me because I've already been all these children. Right. Or, bring, bring them to me. And I think that's, that, that's where she gets it from. But she, she, she is amazing. And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to take over, but I want to talk about you. <laughs> There's some things that, and that's how you live, too. And if she grew up on the phone, that's good. There are a lot of people who grew up on the phone, but they still don't do what she does. But I think it's because she puts other people forward and put herself last. Okay, I have, and you know, uh, when I wake up in the morning and then my, I rest my brains for the night, uh, I have a lot of thoughts. Thoughts just run through my mind. And the last, well, I won't say the last thought. And I guess I can say the last thought, too, uh, because... I am going to, it's a dream, but I'm going to get a sheep, and I'm going to train that sheep because <laughs> they tell me you can train anything, so I'm going to train that sheep. And you know, sometimes you say, well, in the world she going to do that? But let me tell you what happened. I was talking to this young man last Friday, and I said to him, you know, I want to get a sheep from the farm, and I'm going to train the sheep. He said, wait a minute. He said, I have a friend that have a sheep, and I'm going to talk to her. He called her right then. She had a sheep that she had trained, but the sheep didn't have but three legs. And he told me, and she told me he was able to get all this information about me. Yes, you can train the sheep. And just last week, somebody had a sheep in the car riding it around. So I'm going to have a <laughs> <laughs> and and the other thing I was going to say before I said that, and I don't know what it is now. Is it a pet that you want, a pet? Sheep? Yeah, pet. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to have it as a pet. But I, I decided she has a farm, and where I'm going to get it from, I'm going to say, now listen, this is the deal. You keep the sheep. You feed the sheep. I train the sheep. And then, I, <laughs> and then when I want to come and get the sheep, I can come and get the, the sheep. There was something else. Oh. What? Another thing, I'm always starting something because I started the hen party. And the hen party was for women that were sitting at home and lonely. 
And I started down at the barn a couple of years ago, and they said, well, what are you talking about, a hen party? I, what are we going to do? I say, cackle. That's what you're going to do. <laughs> so anyway, we started the hen, I started the hen party, and you won't, it, it's just amazing what it done for some of the women because they were there to, to open up, you know, somebody to talk to, somebody to, to listen. But my party I'm starting now, what I'm going to start now, and you all can start it too, and we're going to start it today. <laughs> Each one of us, we are so important. You know, sometimes you don't think you're important, but you are. You're important to yourself, your family, the world. But anyway, what I want you to do is when you wake up tomorrow morning or you can start today, make somebody smile. And you can make them smile just by saying hi. You know, if they don't speak to you, you've done your duty. But we can all make somebody smile. And so, and so, after, uh, well, I, I do this a lot of times. Anyway, and sometimes you can just, it'll change a person's life. And while at the barn, a guy came along and I said, because I have a little in there. So I say, come on in. He didn't want to come in. I said, come on in. We might be related. <laughs> sure enough, he was born in Benedict. He was born in Benedict. So I told him to sit down. He sat down and I began to tell him. And what I tell young people, I said, it's none of my business what happened to you before we talk. My business is to help you. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not here. I can't help you if I push you down. I can only help you if I push you, pull you up. But one thing sure, I'm not going to let you pull me down. But if you want to be helped, I'll pull, pull you up. So I hope that each one of you will make somebody smile. Uh, can you go to uh, Brian, I mean, uh, Bell Alton High School too? Yes. <laughs> and one day, believe it or not, I wrote a second hand, <laughs> a second, and that's on the front of my book, that second hand that the lady I worked for for $3 a week <laughs> bought that bicycle for $6. And one day I missed the bus and I had rode the bicycle down to Bryantown store. I rode that bicycle 18 miles to Bre Bell Island High School from Bryantown. It, and it came, it, the man brought it back on the bus. Somebody reminded me, Webb, you remember when you rode the bicycle? <laughs> I said, no, I forgot it, but I know it now. <laughs> and going to school, we had to ride. The bus left Benedict came through uh, Gallon Green, Malcolm, Waldo. Kids were on that bus one hour. And then when we got to the, the um, Pamunkey Hill, we had to get off and walk up the hill because the bus didn't have a whatever. And y'all, somebody must remember when the cars had to back up the hill because they didn't have enough whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Webb, okay, uh, when you mentioned about the bar, barn, barn, what days are you there? Oh, Saturday mornings from uh, nine to I say nine thirty to whenever I feel like going home. If I'm, <laughs> if I'm doing good business, I'll stay. If not, I'll go on home. And on Sundays is from twelve to five. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mrs. Webb, I have a question. Um, did you work a secular job? In did I do? <laughs> did you work? Uh, did you work a job other than the farm, like Washington D.C. or? Oh yes, uh, my I went into New York City when I was uh, 19 years old, right into the heart of Harlem. And at that time, the war was going on, and people were doing a little bit of everything. And my heart would be jumping. And when I left my aunt's house, believe it or not, I would run to the subway station. I thought I was safe in get, getting on the train. And then I, because I lived with her at first until someone broke into the house twice. And can you imagine coming from work and 
all this debris. But anyway, I went to live with my aunt in the, in the Bronx. But then I took up nursing, practical nursing, and uh, during the war, it was uh, one year of uh, class, and I we done it in nine months. So I worked there, and uh, hmm, I think I came back to Washington in 1940. I came back to Washington in 1947, I think, or 48. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then. I, when I retired in 1980, uh, I told the nursing home that I would work one day a week, and I end up working seven days. <laughs> I, I worked with premature babies, and I came to the nursing home and worked with adults, and that was a pleasure. I really loved it, but I couldn't work seven days a week. And uh, so it, they knew I was retired. So. You know, they were cold, and I'd go, okay. Did you tell her where you worked for all those years? Huh? When you came from New York, where did you work? When you came from New York and you, you came to Washington, D.C., Oh, yeah, you? I work in uh, D.C. General Hospital in Washington. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many years? Oh, 50? I work, I work, not, not 50, I'm, oh, 30, 30, 30. That's okay, 30 gets it too. And road too, road, road to, up at Winding Road. Um, I have to laugh sometimes because uh, when I was 50, at, when I had uh, retired and uh, Matthew Henson's descendants came to this, uh, this country and this, this uh, town, uh, then when the man asked me, uh, did I know anyone that had seen Matthew Henson, Ma not Matthew Henson, Matthew Henson's, son. yeah. Son. And uh, anyway, but to make a long story short, I was so excited about somebody being 90, I think the woman was 99, <laughs> was I excited? <laughs> I took my two grandchildren, which is uh, they're in their 40s now, because I wanted my grandchildren to see this lady that was 90 years old. <laughs> and look, almost got my car broke up. Van, I had the van because the boys got fighting when we got back in the car. We got right here in the plate. But I thought, when I thought of that, I said, oh my God. Okay. And look at you there. <laughs> I just want to say, yeah, just want to say one thing about the smile uh, you have shared. So, so much seed, good seed to all of us, good fruit. Uh, there's a saying about the smile that on this planet there are thousands of languages that people speak, mm -hmm. but a smile speaks them all, speaks to them all. Uh, yeah. A smile can enrich people's lives, so that's a great tip. Mm -hmm. And uh, a smile is the process of giving, and that's what you've done all your life, yeah. what you've shared. I could just tell stories, and now, I, since I've been at the barn, and stories have been told to me, I can tell stories. And so what I tell people now, I tell them two stories, and I say, you got to pay for the next one. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, but uh, and, and and it's it's nothing like stories. Stories are real. The next story just fascinate me. You can meet a person, and within 15 minutes, you all have talked, and you you know each other, just that quick. You know, just sit down with me for a while, and who are you? Wake and at the barn, I say we meet people from all over the world because we meet people that uh, are coming here visiting their relatives or that had came here years ago and tell you their story when they were uh, in Germany. Those are some stories, you know, but how they had to hide and all like that. So you know the other people's story. And then so many times, uh, you know, you can look at a person sometimes, oh, he got money or she got money. You know, but you don't know until you sit and talk to a person. You know, what they had to go through, what they had to eat and all like that. How you gonna know unless you sit there and communicate with them and you tell each other your story? Mm -hmm.
Okay. Yeah. Huh? You can end it. I can end it. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> one, more one more question. Yes. I uh, heard you speak about uh, serenity, Paul. Yes. Okay. When, what era, what, I mean, what year did you visit the farm? I mean, when were you introduced to that farm? What, what year? What year? Uh -huh. The year. Yeah. When I had the opportunity to go down when they found the, um, um, the slaves there. I had the opportunity to go down, but the best opportunity I had was I had read in the book that uh, Serenity Farm used the prisoners from uh, the release center to, to help on the farm. And I knew too that I saw on the shirts Feed the Hunger. So here I looked and here come these four prisoners and they sat all sat on a bench. And I went right over to them and I say, I, I know where you all are from, you know, and uh, so what are you doing and how much longer have you, you know, you got to stay, you know, and they was telling me, but the, that helping on that farm taught them how to, the vegetables, and one of the, bo the guys that I talked to had been in my house, not to steal nothing, but he'd been there, <laughs> <laughs> he had been there with one of my, my, my sons, and uh, and when we got ready to do the digging, because they were just, uh, uh, doing the uh, archaeology. Go back to 2012. Let, let her, let, bring her up to date real fast. 2012 is when they contacted you. Yeah, they no, the they called me a clear blue sky and said, uh, I understand you belong to the Afro-American Heritage Society. Uh, we are interested in coming down and uh, doing this uh, excavate digging. Can you imagine? And we were there that day when they bought the, the big uh, land, uh, anyway, over. And as they scratched the layers off of the soil, and there laid some bodies, the, not the bodies, the skeleton. Uh huh. And so that was, that was really something to see. But they took the skeletons to. Uh, Smithsonian in Washington, and they buried them, brought them back, and reburied them there. That cemetery is open to the public at certain times. Okay, uh, thank you all for coming. I hope uh, that I have enlightened you with some of my story. I want each and every one of you to feel free. Get my phone number, call me if you please. But you have to catch me. Ha, 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 ha.